They wore shirts, they wore hats, they wore the flag. NASA workers and their families gathered on the lawn at the Kennedy Space Center, awaiting history. The moment had been more than a decade in the making. It was late in the afternoon when the new mega rocket with the Orion spacecraft perched on top emerged from the vehicle assembly building destined for a trip to the moon. There's only so many first times in your life, right? And, and in that building, you saw an Apollo Saturn come out. You saw a shuttle come out. Three times in 60 years, a manned vehicle's come out of the building. It's, it's exciting. The Space Launch System rocket, or SLS, is huge. At 322 feet, it's taller than the Statue of Liberty. Future versions will be even bigger. And the thrust produced by SLS is greater than the iconic Saturn V's that took astronauts to the moon. SLS is billed as the most powerful rocket in the world. On this mission, that rocket behind me will produce eight and a half million pounds of thrust. But the next one is really for the record books with the rocket producing nine and a half million pounds of thrust. The SLS was designed and built to muscle its way through Earth's atmosphere carrying to the moon not just astronauts, but the supplies, hardware, and infrastructure needed to establish a permanent presence. And eventually, years in the future, Mars will be the next destination. You need this kind of what we call the mega rocket or, or for SLS is this kind of capability to deliver payloads because you, you need this hardware to uh, have a sustainable exploration program, right? You need rovers, you need landers. I mean, you, you need those elements, not just a, a crew transportation system. But first things first, getting this maiden uncrewed moon mission called Artemis 1 off the ground. As a young, perhaps future astronaut played in its shadow, the three and a half million pound rocket and spacecraft sitting on top the crawler transporter took more than 10 hours to reach the launch pad, where for the next month it will undergo non-stop testing. One of the cool things about this vehicle is it's gonna be the most inter instrumented vehicle probably ever flown, right? And we're gonna take that data that we get from the rollout loads, the launch loads, and all of that, and plug it back into our design models, and we'll be able to tweak the models, right, and see how close we are. But everything along the way has been almost to the second or third decimal correct. The big milestone is called the wet dress rehearsal. NASA and the contractor teams will run through a complete launch countdown. The purpose is for the first time to use our launch control system or, or ground and flight application software, which is all new to KC for this program. And we go in, it's our first time to go and load the, the uh, liquid oxygen, liquid hydrogen uh, tanks on the core stage, the, the uh, upper stage. And uh, it'll be the first time to condition the tank and to see if our hardware meshes with, with the, uh, the OEM design hardware for the first time. It has to go well, no big surprises. After a month at the launch pad, the big rocket gets rolled back into the vehicle assembly building where the teams will look at all the data, address any issues that came up. Once the SLS gets the good to go sign off, NASA will set a date for the Artemis One mission. Then SLS and the Orion spacecraft will be on their way. A one month trip, including six days orbiting the moon, before the Orion spacecraft comes home. For my radar, I'm John Zarella. Follow my radar on social media Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Download My Radar on iOS, Android, Amazon Alexa, Xbox, and Windows.